Hi everyone, this is Heather Cooper with Playing with Paper Crafting. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. And uh, I'm just coming to you with my regular Monday morning live. And uh, I'm going to be showing you um, a background technique that I learned not long ago. Um, and uh, I tried it before but I didn't have success with it because I had the wrong alcohol that I was using. And uh, finding the correct alcohol has made all the difference. So I'm excited now to be able to share the um, technique with you. It's called blended alcohol background technique and it's on vellum paper. All right. So this is the card that we're going to be looking at and um, uh, I want to show you the background technique first. So let's get started with that. Hi Gail, glad to see you this morning. So this, <laughs> when I tried it before, this was the result I got. Just watch this. So it wasn't very useful. I mean, you had to glue the heck out of the out of the vellum before it, before it would work. So that's why I didn't show it to you before, right? Because that's not very useful. And the problem was that I, that I was using uh, seventy percent alcohol, and I figured that might be what the problem was because there was too much water in the alcohol. Um, so we hunted down some 99% isopropyl alcohol. Um, well, actually, Ken hand, um, hunted it down for me. I'm kind of a, I don't go out a lot during COVID, so he was able to find it for me. And, um, and the result was like night and day. So I wanna show you some of the ones that I've done already. So these are some of the ones that I've tried over the um, last couple of days. And look at, they're just flat, like they didn't warp at all. <laughs> yeah, very springy. They were very springy, Gail. Yeah. So these ones didn't, let me move this, did not warp at all. They dried flat as a pancake. And uh, so I was really excited that... Um, that was the result, and so I want to show you how to do it. It's really a very simple background technique, and it's not going to take me long to demonstrate that today. So let's get started with that. Um, before I do, though, uh, I wanted to share with you that the, um, the roses and leaves um, that I'm going to be using are from a die set called... All right, my brain is going to leave me now for a minute. Uh, the beautiful brush strokes dies. And they are in the mini catalog, the January to June mini catalog on page 29. Here we are. Okay, so they go, they um, bundle with the brushed blooms stamp set. I didn't use that stamp set, I just used the dies. So the uh, beautiful brush stroke dies and they are layering dies so here's a picture of what they look like right here um, and this kind of is a result I'm not going to spend a long time like putting them together with you today I've already got them assembled um, because I wanted to spend the time this morning on the background okay so let's get started with the background so I'm just going to take a piece of vellum here. I just cut my cardstock, my eight and a half by eleven cardstock, into four uh, pieces. And uh, for this one, I used Flirty Flamingo um, Stampin' Blends, uh, and we're using Stampin' Blends because they're alcohol ink, right? So I used Flirty Flamingo and Highland Heather this one so it's really very very simple all you do and I use the brush uh, end of the blends 
and I just scribble on my vellum. And it's important, I guess, to get the sides and the corners. Just be random. And make sure you leave some room for the island tether. And I'll get this corner with flirty flamingo. Everyone is going to turn out different, of course because you can never duplicate it. Hey, Diane. Okay, so adding some more of the Highland Heather on here. I'm using the dark ones. Um, the reason I'm using the dark shade of the combo other than the light one is that they get really um, diluted with the alcohol and so to get color happening we want to use the darker, darker darker shade of the blends for that so I'm just making sure that my edges I started with the lighter of the two colors um, the flirty flamingo just so that I wouldn't uh, get my tips um, contaminated. All right, so I'm taking the isopro isopropyl alcohol and I'm just using the cap because you don't need very much. So I'm just pouring, whoops, I don't want to pour it right over my and it spills but it dries up so fast because it's 99% alcohol. I'm taking a water painter here and I'm just dipping the tip. If you have any color, it usually takes the color right out. Okay, now I don't want to use a lot because that really wipes it out. I'm just tapping it and you can see the alcohol going to work right away on that and because it's 99% alcohol so only 1% water presumably um, it dries very quickly and it doesn't cause any warping of the uh, vellum so you don't need a lot Look at it spread. You can just sit back and watch it work. I mean, I probably didn't need that much. And I guess um, you get a different um, result depending on how much you use. You can also um, use your uh, water painter to mix it a bit if you want to. And then what I like to do is if I've done that is just add a tip more just to get those blooms happening again. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. I'm going to put that aside. That's the one, this is the one we're going to use. For our background. I'm just going to set that aside and try some other combinations. So I'll just clean my brush off right in the alcohol. Okay, let's see what else. I haven't tried this one yet, so I think I'll try this. I've got um, Poppy Parade and Calypso Coral. So I'm going to start with the Calypso Coral. Let's see how this works out. Maybe it'll look awful, I don't know, but who knows? You can only try, right? You know, if you're in the mood, you can do a bunch of them and then save them to use for backgrounds, have them in supply.
let's bring in the poppy parade. The calypso coral looks kind of funny on the vellum. It all looks like kind of colorful camo. Kind of wishing I hadn't used so much clips of coral up there, but oh well. I'd probably go over. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll go over that. Add a little bit more poppy parade there. And maybe go down here a little bit. Okay, let's try that one out for size. Let's see what happens. Okay, dipping in and I like the fact that when I went over that, I got a really much richer color. I'm trying to remember the name of the demonstrator where I first saw this idea. I think her name is Linda Bedinger, but I'm not certain of that. If anyone knows, let me know, and I will. Well, it is easy, Gail. <laughs> That's why it looks easy. It is very easy. Um, I probably could soak up. This one to let you know that this is now dry completely, so it doesn't take long. A little bit extra here, so I think I want to soak some of this up. Anyway, I will um, give her credit on Facebook when I check and find out. All right, well, that's an interesting. You could play around with this and do a lot of different things. I'm going to let that dry for a bit. Let's try one more. And then I'll put the card together. I've got one that uh, got a little bit of purple on it because it was sitting somewhere. I'm going to try mint macaron and shaded spruce. So. I'm going to try making it, like going over it a little bit to make more concentrated because I really like how that worked out when I went over the um, Calypso Coral with the Poppy Parade and it got really quite dark there. Going over these twice. Anyway, it's very, very easy. All you do need to do though is buy yourself some like 90% or more isopropyl alcohol. And uh, what we were able to find was 99%. We couldn't find any 90%, but it works like a dream. You could experiment with different shapes that you're um, as you color it in. I think I need a little bit more mint macaron down here to break it up.
get those out of the way. Okay, and now we'll try adding the alcohol. Actually, I need to get this edge fixed here. Okay. Now this alcohol has a little orange tinge to it now. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but let's see what happens. I just love watching it start to bloom and work here. Looks so cool. Ask your questions if you have any. Happy to answer. Okay. I think that made a difference. And my water painter comes out pretty clean. I'm just going to let that dry and I'm just going to set that alcohol aside for now. Probably you should do this though in a well ventilated area because I am breathing in fumes right now and uh, it's probably not good in like in a really closed off spot. Yeah, it does look like camo, this one, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set this one aside. And we can take a look at it later. This one is dry now. I like the look of this one. It's really pretty. Okay, so that basically is all there is to it. It's so simple. Um, you know, any of you could do it as long as you have blends and the alcohol, basically, and vellum. Um, so let's um, build our card now. It won't take long. I want that. Oh, the other thing that's interesting is that it looks different depending on the background that you put it on. So this is it on the white. Okay, it's quite like pastel. This is what it looks like on gorgeous grape. It's very muted. This is what it looks like on the flirty flamingo. Um, so I had it on the pink, but I was saying the roses just blended right in with it. There wasn't enough contrast. So <clears throat> I switched out the flirty flamingo for um, the white, basic white, and uh, it looked much better in the end. Okay. So I'm going to take my cardstock base, this is gorgeous grape, and uh, I have all my, on my blog today, I have all the measurements, if you wanted to replicate the card. Okay, um, this is five and a quarter by four inches. So I'm just going to add that. And I'm taking all my tools out of the cutest caddy that I'm going to show you at the end because it is the subject of my newsletter tutorial. And um, if you get my newsletter, subscribe to my newsletter, it's going to be um, a photo tutorial that you can download for free this month and for April I mean all right now this is too big for that we need to get it um, to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth so I'm just going to take my trimmer here and trim it down so three and seven eighths and um, this way too you can decide which side you want to trim off 
after you look at it. It's a pretty good estimate, but not quite enough. There we go. Always hold down the little safety bar there. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I have some vellum tape, which I'm just going to add in this area here because that's where my um, sentiment is going to go, but this stuff is pretty good. You don't, and because this is colored, you probably won't get to see the vellum. So I'm just going to add that. And make sure everything's straight here. It's going to come over a little bit. It's also pretty easy to lift up on. You're not quite straight. Okay. So there's the background. The sentiment is stamped on a label that's a die cut with the tasteful labels dies, one of my go-to dies right now, or go-to die sets right now, tasteful label dies. And that is not on the retiring list, thank goodness. Okay, so that one is, I'm going to add a little bit higher here, right about there. And let me make sure I get it straight because I don't do that well. Okay, and then these are the pieces that I put together from the beautiful brush stroke dies. And I just want to add those. I don't need this anymore. So I'm going to use glue dots and dimensionals for these. I love any kind of layering. Just looking for my <clears throat> full-size dimensionals here. I love any kind of layering dies. So I'm going to start by adding uh, the leaves onto one of the purple, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the purple uh, roses. And this rose was made from um, the um, Purple Posy cardstock, which is one of the ink colors that's retiring, uh, Highland Heather, and Gorgeous Grape for the layers. So I'm just going to add that on there. And then I want to add. Uh, two or three blue dots just to add it to the um, couple should do with, with the one I have on there with the rows. And I'm going to put it right about there. Okay, then I'm going to use um, a glue dot to attach a leaf onto the pink rose here and the pink rose is made up of blushing bride flirty flamingo and magenta madness cardstock so I want that right about here okay and I want this to be popped up a bit So, I'm going to add about three dimensionals to the back here. And remove those. OK, 
Okay, and then just add that a little bit higher there. I don't want to cover up my sentiment. Okay, and then <clears throat> one more. We'll add the leaf. Ah, getting that all over my finger. And we'll add that right in here. And then we'll add a couple of dimensionals. It takes a little time to um, glue those on, but um, not too much. Let me just uh, take off the excess paper on here. And I will put these back in my caddy. So I want to be able to show it to you in a minute. And now we need to add our pearls. These are the pastel pearls. They came with the hydrangea suite in the January to June mini catalog. So with my take your pick tool, I'm going to add that there. And uh, right about here, and another one about there, and another one. Oh, thought I had it. Where'd it go? Left it behind. Okay, right about there. And that is the card all finished. So that didn't take too long. Um, I just want to show you a couple of things now. So these two are completely dry now. Okay. I don't know why that just got discolored. But I think that was probably from the um, silicone craft mat underneath. So I probably, I should have probably cleaned it off before I went ahead and did this. This is my favorite. This definitely looks like, um, Camo. So if you're doing a guy's card, that might be a handy background. Okay. And I want to show you my little caddy I made. So I got the idea for the caddy. All right, let me just tip it for you. From my friend and colleague, um, Amy Jasper. She did, um, it's a let me just move some of the stuff out of here. She did um, the back two rows as a uh, adhesive caddy um, to try and, you know, create some order on her crafting desk. But I'm a little more messy than that. I needed another small shallow tray in front for things like scissors and um, bone folders and other odds and ends, like my uh, take your pick tool and that sort of thing. I have a, a large caddy that will take very tall um, tools and it has drawers that will take very small ones, but nothing that will really work for my, my paper snips and my bone folders. They disappear in the, in the tall part of the caddy and they won't fit in the small drawer. So I wanted a, a, a shallow tray on the front. So I added that onto her um, basic design. So it's got room for all your um, adhesives. I like the way it holds your uh, Tombow glue upside down. Um, and then you've got a little bit of room in front for um, you know, your other odds and ends. And it's really not that hard to do. So this will be uh, in my newsletter, my tutorial for my newsletter. Okay. Um, oh, and there's another use for it as well. If you have already have something for that, it also holds clear blocks really nicely. So it's got room for all sorts of clear blocks. It's uh, this one goes in here really nicely. So I've got um, 
I forgot to say that the sentiment that we used is from the Happy Thoughts stamp set. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Um, you can find all the measurements on my blog at playingwithpapercrafting.com. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you next Monday at 11 a.m. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>